Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the executive director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. And this is our weekly update blog number 27, talking about our progress for the week of August 26th, 2013. The purpose of our organization is to create a comprehensive global solution. And we are doing this as a highest good of all organization, purpose to create open source and free shared blueprints for sustainable and self-replicating communities, villages, and city models that address food, energy, housing, education, holistic and fulfilled living practices, social injustice, social inequality, and everything else. And that's why we call it a comprehensive solution. Because all of these things are interconnected, and it's actually what I'd really like to talk about on this video is exactly how we're going to address those things and then what we're doing right now, what we're doing to create this and what that looks like. Uh, but first, as is the format with these videos, I'd like to go through a bullet point list of everything we've accomplished in the last week. And uh, as always, if you go to the YouTube video description and you click down below, uh, you can, you'll can you see there's a link there to a written blog that includes links to our website for complete details on all the stuff that I'm going to talk about, as well as images, pictures, pictures and things like that, the most recent exports uh, from everything that we're working on. So let's go through the basics first. Uh, in this last week, super productive week, and I'm excited to get a lot of things out on the website as open source content that we will uh, that we've been working on for a long time most specifically we get the hoop houses page is now up on the website which talks about exactly what a hoop house is which is a super affordable greenhouse that you can build anywhere and uh, add a couple months uh, to your growing season before and after your growing season so we have those details up as well as everything that will be grown in the hoop houses how many hoop houses we're going to build in the first year on the property uh, to produce 20,000 pounds of food in our first year and exactly uh, what those foods are details of that it's all up on the website now now behind the scenes we're working on all of our other outdoor plantings so a big part of what we're doing is stewardship of the earth. It's about building a food forest. It's about regenerating the soil, regenerating the land, and um, being true stewards of the land. Really, really taking care of, a land, of the land to be able to uh, improve its growing capacity to maximize what you can get out of the land in a way that is sustainable. And uh, I think a lot of people right now are aware that our current conventional agricultural practices really aren't ideal if your goal is to produce maximally healthy food and to produce and to maintain land that's going to continue to produce food long term and so our outdoor planting plan and the food forest page that we're working on now this week is a great example of exactly how you can produce your building materials on the land while simultaneously producing a huge abundance of food capable of feeding hundreds of people exactly what that plan looks like so that's what's happening behind the scenes in this last week, and we'll continue to work on that this week. But we've got the Hoop Houses page up, which is very exciting. Check that out. Go to the link down below, and you can, uh, you can see that page. Or go to our website, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash hoop houses, hoop dash houses, and you can see uh, that new page. Also, um, we did a great interview this last week talking about food infrastructure. So in the last couple months, we have done an immense amount of work, and there's a lot of links to the Google Docs that are behind the scenes being edited and then we're moving that over onto the website. I did the hap dance last week because we got all of the plants up on the tropical atrium planting and harvesting page which is super super exciting to have that done because it's months of work and then we also um, now we've got the food projections for that structure as well are now done and so we'll get those up this week but we've also got all of the foods and everything that we're picking out as part of our open source botanical garden model which you go to our website forward slash botanical garden and see what that looks like which is really uh, an approach to growing food that is regenerative once again it ties into this whole stewardship idea and I'll talk about this comprehensive global solution a little bit more afterwards and so um, we've got all that stuff done behind the scenes as well and now it's bringing we're bringing it all together with the food force and that will pretty much put the wraps on the complete food infrastructure for one community for year one and year two everything that we're going to plant what can be expected really over the first five years, working up to a process of being able to feed hundreds of people on the property. And so, and true food self-sufficiency. So very, very cool to have that stuff done. And where I was going with that was we did an interview, which I also linked to uh, in the written blog, 
with our botanist, Michael Martin, who has done the majority of the work for choosing all of these plants. He's sourced plants from all over the world, amazingly knowledgeable gentleman who has done an immense amount of work and has created this, this um, unparalleled diversity of food selection that we'll be growing on the property to demonstrate what is possible. And so if you'd like to hear an hour-long interview about food specifically and how this food model can transform the way that the planet looks at food, um, that's, a big, that's part of the interview as well. And so I'll link to that. Uh, also in this last week, something really huge that we got up on the website is the Earthbag Village materials page has now been updated with exactly what the materials costs will cost, what the materials costs are for uh, one individual dome and what the materials costs are would be for a trio of three domes with the central patios of three homes, uh, showing that we can definitely build a home for under $5,000, and you could really build them cheaper than that if you weren't adding in uh, some of the bells and whistles that we are. So pretty cool to see that stuff coming along. Um, the Straw Bale Village CAD is now coming along. So this, the Earthbag Village is maximally affordable sustainability, and the Straw Bale Village is maximally a stan uh, expandable and modular sustainability. And we'll talk about this as part of the comprehensive global solution too. But uh, there's some great pictures up there from Dave Whalen. Um, sorry, I got it, pronounced it wrong last week. Dave Wallen uh, has done some amazing work on that as well. Sorry about that, Dave. Uh, Dave Wallen's uh, work in CAD is, is up on the page. You can click on the link down below and take a look at what's going on with that. Um, so the Straw Bale Village is trying to move forward. And then Sago Center, duplicable city hub. This is a big part of it as well. Um, a duplicable city center and hub that saves a ton of resources. It provides that central hub for eating and, and dining and, and recreation, as well as a group laundry facility, etc. Saves a massive amount of resources, hugely energy efficient, hugely space efficient. And so now we've got some great updates in 3D. We've been adding in the windows. We finished our research on windows, and so we've got pictures now up with where the windows are going to be, and we're looking at maximum passive heating and cooling for that. And so all the research and everything was done on that. We placed those windows, and you can see those pictures. And there's, uh, there's some really cool, I think they're hexagons. No, they'd be pentagon windows because it's a geodesic dome that you can take a look at that have now been placed, as well as some diamond windows that are going to be replaced with dormer windows as soon as we get the details, final details from the county on how high those need to be off the ground and exactly what size those need to be to meet fire code. So cool pictures of that stuff is up. Uh, Tropical Atrium, thanks to the work of Devin Porter, is also moving forward. Um, there's some very cool pictures of that as well. Doors have been added in to the storage area, front and back door as well. Um, also stairs leading down. And so if you look at the big, the whole earth bag village, Tropical Atrium, food production and recreational space that's in the center that has is a quite a multi-purposed facility. And so there's some great 3D progress on that. You see the pictures of those as well. And um, we finished the, behind the scenes, we finished the Tropical Atrium Harvest Projections. And so those are not up on the pay, on the website yet. As soon as they do, that will completely finish the Tropical Atrium Planting and Harvesting page. Uh, so maybe I'll do another happy dance, although this little piece and adding those in is really not that big of a deal. So we'll get those up this week as well. And then the Education for Life program continues to move on. Um, lots of editing that's happening behind the scenes there. For the strategies of being and I guess I'll go into details on that with a comprehensive global solution too so um, yeah that's my overview of what we've accomplished in this last week and uh, what I'd like to talk about now is really the reason for it all um, what is this idea of a comprehensive global solution our idea and everything that we're trying to create here the whole point is to create a comprehensive solution that addresses everything Right, not just food, energy, and housing, but also education, recreation, holistic living, ethical business, for-profit and non-profit business models to open source the concept of a completely sustainable civilization. And the reason why we're doing that is because these things are connected. I had somebody give us feedback, uh, Jack Reed, who wrote the book, The Next Evolution, which is an amazing book, and I would recommend it. He gave me the feedback on one of our interviews that he did, and he said, hey, Jay, you're not talking about the fact that the reason why you're addressing all of these things is because they are interconnected. And I had to laugh because it's like, well, that's so obvious, right? I mean, of course they're interconnected. How can you address 
food and housing and energy without also addressing sustainable business practices. How can you address sustainable business practices with people that don't have food, energy, and housing? How can you live a life that is fulfilled and happy of people that are really contributing and giving back to the world if they can't meet their basic needs? It seems so obvious, and yet it really isn't obvious. And if we want an example that I feel like that we could just take a look at history, and you can see what's going on, and this idea of how the mentality of everyone for themselves has continued to self-propagate because people, in a lot of cases, have no choice but to live that way because their basic needs aren't being met. And so the idea of the one community model, well, let me go back to that. Their basic needs aren't being met, and so how can they give back to the world and make a difference and be this ongoing con contributor to positive things and giving back to the world and, and contributing to their surrounding community and constantly growing and evolving everything that it is that they are to expand and help even more people if their own basic needs aren't being met. And the next step on that is why would anybody want to invest their entire life in this idea of building sustainable food, housing, and you know doing a different thing if it didn't meet their higher level needs also? If there wasn't a fulfilled living model that went along with it, why would anybody, if sustainable living was in and of itself the answer, we'd all already be living sustainably, right? And so the idea of putting all of this stuff together is that it's not a complete model, in our opinion, if it doesn't include an emotional sustainability component. And more important and more exciting than that is if it does include an emotional sustainability component, if it does include that lifestyle and that environment that's built into the model for a more enriching, more fulfilling lifestyle that contributes to your local community and to the much larger community, and in our case, to the global community, if it does include that and it can provide that better than the current system, then it will become predictably self-replicating. The idea is that the model doesn't have to be sold. The model doesn't have to be marketed, per se. The idea that it just exists and people experiencing it will create a drive to want to create that and to duplicate it. And if the model inherently helps more, gives more than it takes, provides more than it takes, and helps the surrounding community, then this idea of a self-replicating, self-propagating model, as it spreads, it will spread the idea even further and help even more people. And so everything that we're doing with one community is based on this idea. This is why we talk about being a highest good for all organization. Because the model benefits everybody. It's meant to be built in, in, in communities that are affluent, it's meant to be built in third world countries, but more importantly, it's meant to be built so that every time it is built, it gives more than it takes. And so the foundations of everything that we're creating are housing that is more efficient. It's more space efficient, it's more resource efficient, it's healthier to live in, and it redefines life and gets creates an environment that is, instead of being focused on sitting in front of your computer or sitting in front of your television set. It gets you out of the house doing things, growing your own food, spending time with your kids, spending time with your family, spending time with your local community, helping people, doing the things that bring more enrichment to a person's life, the things that really, really make life worth living, you know, that make people excited to get up every single day and say, yeah, you know, my life is amazing. It's I eat good food, I breathe clean air, I drink healthy water, like this is awesome, and I'm doing something in the world that makes a difference, or I'm just living my ideal life because I've established it such that my foundational needs are all being taken care of, and the reality of it is, is I'm doing no harm in the world. I'm not part of the problem, I'm part of the solution just by the lifestyle that I'm living. And so, the housing is designed that way, so is the food infrastructure. The food infrastructure in our open source food model is not just this idea of grow your own food. The idea is grow your own food that is far superior to what you can get in the grocery store because it's more nutritious, because it's obviously fresher because you're growing it yourself, and because it is far more diverse 
than what you can get in the grocery store as well. Look at our food infrastructure. If you haven't seen it, look at the 50 different types of apples that we will be growing in just one structure. Look at the 50 different types of figs that we'll be growing in just one structure. Look at the broad diversity of everything that we will be producing. And the idea is to show people that this nutritional diversity, you want to fight cancer? Eat a nutritionally diverse diet. You know, you want to live as long as possible? You want to combat the most common diseases that humanity is dealing with right now? Prevention, nutrition, you know, and if you want to spread this idea of sustainable food and people wanting to grow their own food, we believe that it should demonstrate something that is far superior to what people are getting right now. You know, and we believe if it's truly and the highest good of all, then it should be a regenerative practice. And this is why we have our whole open source botanical garden model, which is purpose to increase biological diversity, to support this idea of biological diversity, to help it spread, and to demonstrate to people what it is that they're missing and what it is that they're capable of, and to grow a diversity of food and to continue humanity's research into the different foods that can be grown in the different areas and the food structures that we're designing are have already designed have been, are being have been set up so that you can grow these types of foods literally anywhere in the world and to produce a volume and diversity of food that will feed far more than the people that it takes to maintain those structures and so in doing you know a couple people can maintain these structures but they can feed many and then the more that you build, the more that you can feed. And so, and it's all local food, and then it doesn't require all these resources to transport it, etc. Food, housing, it's just a couple different pieces. Energy, we're open sourcing the whole energy infrastructure, which is not super complex or anything mind-blowing when it comes down to solar and things like that. But what we're really focusing on is energy conservation and doing the research and development in energy conservation, every house will be fitted with an energy meter so that we can see exactly what our use is and not because we want to monitor each other and go, oh, you're using too much energy because we're actually interested in coming up with the solutions and seeing how we can cut corners, how we can shave this stuff down and not affect our lifestyles dramatically, how we can adapt because we want to do the right thing because it makes sense. You know, because what we're doing for ourselves, we are doing for the whole planet. We're helping other people. We want to share that idea and engage the global conversation and talk about these things. And that's just the foundational infrastructure, right? That's just the infrastructure that sets you up so you go, okay, well, my energy bills are taken care of. My food bills are taken care of. My housing bills are taken care of. But what about education? Like, education is a major problem on this planet right now. There are so many people that are not getting an education. There's so many people that don't have access education or people that have lost confidence in the educational paradigm as it exists right now and would like something better. We're providing that as well. We're designing that a open source and free shared education program that people will be able to plug into online, be able to take it and apply it to any curriculum that they want. And we've designed out the curriculum as well. And so we're going to be moving forward into creating the ultimate classroom. But the whole idea is to create community-based educational programs that people can apply in urban environments or in complete teacher demonstration villages, communities, and cities like what we're designing so that people can set up education programs and really have hands-on say in what those look like and an education program that invi involves the entire community. Not something where you just send your kids off to be educa educated, something where you're a participant in the educational process and so that the adults are also learning through the process and it's built on this idea of we are all teachers and we are all students in life. And that we all have something to learn and something to teach in every experience. And so we are building this structure, this educational structure, and this idea that is foundational to the open source community model in that there should be an education program. It doesn't have to be, but for people that want it, we believe that that option should exist. And so, and we feel that it is very important, especially when you start talking about third world countries and really taking this model into places that need it most, just providing food is a band-aid. It's just a bandage on the problem. It's not really a solution. You can feed people, but if you don't give them the resources to be able to create themselves, to build themselves up as a, as a functional force for taking care of themselves, how is that a solution? How is that a comprehensive global solution? It's not, right? And so as a highest good of all organization, we realize that, you know, just to feed people, just to clothe people, just to give them a place to live, 
just to provide energy, and a third of the planet right now does not have energy, just to provide those things is amazing and it's necessary. But if all you're doing is providing those things, it's our opinion that that's not really a solution because you're giving somebody something, but you're not giving them what they need to become truly self-sufficient. And so the big comprehensive model that we have ties in the education model with that. It also ties in an ethical business practice, for-profit and non-profit business models as well, so that what you can do and what we are purposed to do is demonstrate that investing in this idea, in building self-sufficient teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities, by doing this, it serves the needs of the individual, first and foremost. It serves the needs of the individual better than what most people are experiencing right now. So it's a good investment from a personal perspective. But also, it serves the financial needs of the individual. It's profitable. And the business model that we're setting up and everything we're de we want to demonstrate with one community, the whole idea is that by building one community as a teacher demonstration village itself, it will be an ecotourism destination where people can come and see everything that we're doing. They can participate hands-on in what it is that we're creating or just come to see it and experience it. And then they can take the open source blueprints and duplicate it for themselves. And we're here to train people, to help people, to hold people's hands through that process, and more importantly, to create an ongoing and ever constantly expanding, indefinitely expanding global archive of open source blueprints, tools, and tutorials to demonstrate that as we steward one small community, that that stewardship can be demonstrated as so successful and the food forest details that we're working on right now are a great example of this. Like we've looked at it, we said, wow, you know, with this food force, we have the ability to take a piece of property and turn it into a, literally a paradise to increase the water table, to increase the wildlife, to increase everything that's growing on that. Truly, we have the ability now as human beings to take pretty much any piece of land and with very low tech approaches, but intelligent stewardship and saying our goal is to maximize productivity sustainable long-term productivity of this land we have the ability to do that and turn it into an oasis and then we have the ability to expand that oasis and this idea doesn't just apply to the food forest the comprehensive global solution isn't just about expanding an oasis of food it's about expanding an oasis of housing it's about expanding a whole, uh, uh, an oasis of energy it's about expanding an oasis of ethical business practices. It's about expanding an oasis of education. It's about expanding an oasis of social equality. It's about expanding an oasis of social justice. And the reason why, the way that this all happens, is because the solution, the comprehensive solution, builds an infrastructure so that people have enough of what they need, not just meeting their needs, but exceeding their needs. And when people have everything that they need, what they need in this environment, then it makes sense to give. It makes sense to share that. And our whole model is about finding people that want to do that, finding people that want to invest in that, finding people that see that as a good idea and they understand that solving third world, problem, third world country problems comprehensively and completely and really, really addressing those and creating ways that are not just bandages on the, on the situation, but actual solutions. We're looking for people that see that making a difference over there has a direct impact on us right here. People that want to do that. And we're creating the model to provide an environment for individuals that is enriching and fulfilling and fun to be a part of while doing that. And that's the comprehensive global solution. That's the idea of the self-replicating teacher demonstration village. And so our part in this is, A, obviously to demonstrate it, but our, our, the, in demonstrating, not just to demonstrate it, that's not good enough, in our opinion. There's already demonstrations of this happening in the world. There's already working examples of sustainability. There's already amazing working examples of food self-sufficiency. Our part and what we want to add that, that perhaps is unique or it seems to be fairly, it seems to be unique. I haven't seen anybody else that's doing what we're doing to the degree that we're doing it. Our part is to open source project launch blueprint it all. 
meaning not just to open source it saying, hey, everything we have is free and free shared, but we are specifically taking the time and energy to create specific roadmaps, detailed roadmaps and plans for everything that we do. Everything from 3D rendering to step-by-step -step processes to who to contact, who to talk to, exactly how much it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost. And so as we put these details up on the website, we're looking at going, okay, we're doing the absolute best that we can to plan for every possibility and then to over plan and to build in planning on top of it. Because once we get the Earthbag Village and the Straw Bay Bill Village established, we'll be permanent solution organization. We will have the infrastructure necessary to expand indefinitely, to continue to contribute and make a difference globally forever. We will be a viable business community, village, city that has everything that it needs, the infrastructure and everything that it needs to continue to expand. And that's the model that we want to share. In setting that up, we want to teach people how they can do that too. And so someone will come and visit and they'll see the Earthbag Village and they'll see the vermiculture toilets and how that all works, you know, how you don't need a traditional septic. You'll see the gray water processing and how that all works and how all that water is being recycled how it's giving back to the land, they'll see the food forest, and how it's uh, literally an oasis compared to everything around it, and how it's an oasis that continues to expand and make a difference. They'll see how people are living and what the lifestyle looks like, and then they'll see that they can do it too. And they'll see that we've created a specific roadmap and that we are here, we are here to walk people through the steps of setting it up because that's the idea, and that they can be a part of the global solution as well. They, they can be a part of the comprehensive solution by meeting their own needs and setting this up and establishing this. And that it's easier to do in third world countries than it is to do in the United States. And that we are building the marketing engine to be able to promote them in a third world country so that people can come and visit us or they can go and visit them. Go visit somebody in Haiti. Go visit somebody in Brazil. Go visit somebody in Africa. Go visit somebody in Australia. And when they see that lifestyle in those places and see that they could establish something like that and really make a difference in their own lives, lives of their families, lives of their friends, and in the lives of the surrounding community, not as a bandage, but as a permanent and comprehensive solution. And even better than that, a permanent comprehensive solution that in the event that they try it and they go, you know what, this permanent and comprehensive solution doesn't work for me. Like, I, you know, I tried the community thing and I don't want to do it. They could take the infrastructure that they built and they would be able to sell that as a profitable investment. And then we're there to help that as well. Like, okay, you put the time in and, and the infrastructure, you built it up, there's a value to that. It's more valuable than the money that you put into it. It was a fun adventure. If you want to go back to whatever or do something different, we'll help. We're here by promoting the model as a whole and by, by demonstrating what's possible, one community becomes the beacon Right? One community becomes the lightning rod. It becomes the drop of water that creates the wave. And people interested in it, then those opportunities saying, hey, we want to train those people. We want places to be able to send people and to continue to expand the model as quickly as possible. And so that's another aspect of this. And that's when we talk about why it has to be a comprehensive solution that includes for-profit and non-profit business models. Without that, Really, without that, without the education, what is the food and energy and housing infrastructure if you don't have an education model that goes along with it? What is it if you don't have a, a business model that goes along with it? It's not complete. And of course, what are all those things if you don't have a fulfilled living example built into that as well where people are happier and, and living lives that make it all worth investing in and putting the time and energy because it is a lot of work as the people that are doing the work right now. I have people ask all the time, like, well, when is one community going to start? It's starting. <laughs> We've been working on this. I've been working on this now full time for three years. You know, and it is moving forward fast. We have a group of over 50 amazing partners and consultants. They're contributing to this, making a big difference. You know, I read the announcements off, you know, each week and show what it is that we're progressing. It's happening. The next big step is to get a piece of property. You know, to get the property that we identified three years ago, and that's when I sold my business 
and begin full time doing this. Once we have that, complete our team and start building. And then we can take this whole open source process to the next level. Take everything that we have right now that is to the best of our ability researched and to absolute detail. Look at our website, look at the materials page, and you will see we've got it down to the detail. I mean, the, the most minute details we can possibly come up with, that's what we're plugging into. And then the next step is when we actually build the Earthbag Village, we've got a whole structure and even custom software that we've designed and continue to evolve that's going to keep track of every hour that we invest and every single thing that we build separately so that we can say it takes exactly this much time to build the Earthbag Village. It take, it, these are the exact tools that we used. And what we determined was the best shovel, <laughs> what we determined was the best Earthbag what we've determined is the best place to buy those things, and then as the next one gets built, if they find another way and, con and continue this evolutionary process, but not just with construction, not just with food, not just with energy, but with education, business model, the actual business model, and how to run an ecotourism resort anywhere in the world and to make that so that there's an influx of money coming into the system so that it can continue to expand and grow on its own so the oasis of the community can become a village and so the oasis of the village can become a city and so the oasis of the city can become a metropolis that is all sustainable and meets all needs simultaneously. And this is the idea of a resource-based economy. This is the idea of a comprehensive solution and putting all the pieces together so that people are cooperating and collaborating instead of competing for the highest good of each other, for their own highest good, and for the highest good of all, all humanity, the whole world. Movements in this planet have been started by individuals. We've already got a group. We've got a group of 50 people that are dedicated to making a difference. Take what we're doing. Use it. Build off of it. Join what it is that we're creating. Become a part of it. If it's interesting to you, if you like what we're doing, just sharing our information is extremely helpful. A movement has already begun. It's already begun. And so now what we're looking for is we're taking it to that next step. But the point of all of this stuff, the whole talk here, is that it needs to be a comprehensive solution. And that's exactly what it is we're creating. Earthbag Village is meant to be maximally affordable sustainability that can be built anywhere in the world. Food infrastructure is meant to be duplicated in the, anywhere in the world and to be able to feed uh, large groups of people, but more importantly, to incorporate stewardship of the land so that you can feed hundreds off of the land and start regenerating that land simultaneously. The energy infrastructure, the Sago Center duplicable city hub designed to save massive resources and once again to create a revenue stream for anybody that wanted to build this anywhere in the world so that they could start once again bringing in money. And so now instead of governmental organizations giving money to different things, instead of individuals trying to trying to give handouts and things, those are all fantastic. But what if we created a model that was so comprehensive and so fulfilling to the individual that mainstream money started investing in it because it made sense for them? So that people go, wow, this makes more sense than what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna put my money in this. This is my idea of a retirement plan. And now my retirement plan is supporting not just myself, my friends, my family, and other people that wanna get involved with this, but supporting the surrounding community and it's helping contribute to the global community simultaneously. And it's such a comprehensive solution that it's addressing everything all at once. I'm repeating myself because I think this is important. And I had no idea that this needed to be said until somebody gave, until Jack gave me feedback and said, you know what, you should talk about this. And so I'm talking about it. This is the purpose of our organization. This is the point. We've added language into the website. It seems so obvious and yet it's not, I guess. And so let's make it obvious. Let's share this idea with people. Let's take this concept of comprehensive global solution and recommend, rec recognize and get other people to recognize that comprehensive global solution doesn't mean a comprehensive energy program. It doesn't just mean a comprehensive housing problem. It doesn't just mean a comprehensive education program. It doesn't just mean a comprehensive food program. 
It means a comprehensive, all those things being interrelated and interconnected and supportive of each other with the business, for-profit, non-profit business, fulfilled living, all of it put together. We build this. One working example. And an easy path for duplication because there's already working examples. An easy path for duplication so that people know what they're, what they're getting involved in, how to do it. And a training organization to help get people up to speed so that they know, so that there's people with hands-on experience and that can coordinate the organizations that specifically train for EarthBag, specifically teach how to build Earth ships and specifically teach how to build straw bale and then build an archive and a suite of supportive materials, tools, tutorials, and resources so people can go get that training and then they have reference materials and they have blueprints that have been approved by the county and we have counties that are on board and we start expanding this idea and expanding the international building code, all this different stuff with the business model and so people know where to turn and what to do. We can live in a different world in our lifetime. Very different. And so that is what we're up to and I'll wrap with that. So as always, thanks for following our project. Thank you for being a part of the Comprehensive Global Solution. If you are somebody who just shares our information on the internet, that is huge. It's huge. If you're somebody that just shares our stuff on the internet, it really makes a big difference. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our Twitter feed, twitter.com forward slash one community org. Check out our Facebook uh, updates page and our fan page, so One Community Fans and One Community Updates on Facebook.com. You know, we are on all the social media networks, but just sharing our pages and liking those kinds of things. And if you're somebody that has skills, if you're somebody that wants to be a part of what it is that we're doing, we have international options. We have satellite member options for people that aren't interested in moving to the property that just want to contribute and be a partner and be a part of everything happening behind the scenes uh, as, as a One Community member but not somebody that's going to move to the property. You have one community pioneer options for people that want to move to the property. We have partnership and consulting options for people who just want to donate time. All of our organizations, 100% unpaid volunteers. We're all doing this for altruistic reasons because we see the value and we're all doing it for also reasons that serve us as well because we see the personal value too, right? Like, wow, how enriching is it to be a part of making history? Very enriching. You know, so we have lots of different options. We even have just internet options. If you want to join it, we have a viral group uh, that we're building. Once we get to 300 people, we're going to do a viral push, and you can read all about that on our website too. So there are tons of options for, for participating in, in our organization. And, or, of course, everything we're doing is open source and free shared. You could copy our entire website and start your own version of one community if you want. That would be a great compliment, and we would love to see that. And uh, we think that's for the highest good of all, too. So with that, thank you, long blog, because I really wanted to talk about the Comprehensive Global Solution. And um, I hope you get involved in our project or, or uh, take our project in a different direction or maybe find another project out there that's moving in the right direction. We're always looking for partners. If you're somebody that's involved in a project, contact us if there's a way that we can work together for the highest good of all. And we are always excited and looking to do that. And so with that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Until next week. Have a good one. Thanks. And subscribe.